FSU ended up beating LSU in the Superdome the other night. You know that, 24 to 23. This was one of those first watch made me feel one thing, but then the rewatch made me feel a little bit of a different thing, especially when it comes to FSU. So on the rewatch, I came away with even more reasons for FSU fans to be pretty excited. Sometimes a score doesn't tell you the whole story other than someone just won a game, but you can't always get the best predictive forward thinking feel just from a final score. Fact of the matter is they could have won 24 to 23 because of five turnovers and you could walk away saying, yeah, they won, but it's kind of hollow. It doesn't mean anything moving forward. And I had somewhat of that feel about the FSU win when I first watched it. But then I went back and watched it and dude, there are a lot of reasons why stuff ha that happened in this game is translatable and transferable throughout the rest of the season for FSU. First thing that was just the most glaring, even on first watch, Jordan Travis is such a better quarterback through one game this year. We, we talked ad nauseum over the summer, what the casuals would call the offseason, about how man, they could not throw the ball to save their lives last year. And the other night, he was 20 of 33 for 260, two touchdowns. Look, I know those aren't Bryce Young numbers, but there's a gulf between what Bryce Young has been and what FSU has been at quarterback. Uh, that is a huge positive step in the right direction. You need to consider the context, too. They did not run the ball great. So this was not LSU selling out to stop the run and then Jordan Travis just, just picking apart holes in a loose zone back there. Uh, they averaged 3.5 yards per carry, did Florida State. So offense also was not great in the red zone. And look, you can partly blame that on Jordan Travis. This wasn't a perfect game. The reason I'm pointing out some of these things is FSU won a big game, and I think they could reasonably go back to Tallahassee and say, we won this thing, and there were this many errors? There were this many flaws in our game? We didn't really run the ball all that great? We were, I think they had five trips to the red zone and had 10 total points. Like, imagine being Mike Norvell. I tweeted out, that video that I think Florida State put out of him walking down the corridor. Super, I love the Superdome. Love it. It's like a million years old. He's walking down that decrepit old corridor there that a lot of us who have covered games there before know very well. And he walks in a locker room and they go crazy. And then, you know, he's soaked. But afterwards, I imagine that staff got back to Tallahassee and looked at that film and said, we feel like we could have run away with this. Now, of course, LSU goes back to Baton Rouge and they say, well, I mean, if we didn't muff every punt that was ever kicked to us, maybe we could have done the same thing. But it is such a relief because you felt, if you're a Florida State fan, for so long, like you're inching your way in the right direction. I've said this on the show many times over the summer about FSU when talking about this opening game that now they have in the win column. It would be so nice to get some validation and some confirmation that you're headed in the right direction. Like I drive frequently from Columbus, Georgia to Nashville, Tennessee. It's about a five hour drive on a good night. And it's nice when you finally start passing the signs that actually give a mileage distance to Nashville. You don't see those in Noonan, Georgia. You don't see those in Calhoun, Georgia. You see a huge Bucky's there, like 120 gas pumps of that thing, visible from space. But you don't see Nashville mileage signs. Then when you get to Chattanooga, then you finally start to see it. Well, Florida State, man, they've been driving for a little while under Mike Norvell right now. And they're not where they want to be. And no one is under the misguided notion that they are. But finally, the other night, they get a big win. Things finally go their way. Uh, they, they do not fall victim to what a lot of us, me included here, uh, to be brutally honest, thought they would fall victim to, like being outmatched on the perimeter, uh, offensive line, being dismantled in fairness i thought mason smith would be a big part of that and they lost him early on after he did dismantle them one play and then tore his acl but they didn't fall victim to a lot of that stuff so finally you're starting to get within drivable distance within within uh, one gas tank of where you finally want to be so here's what it's not what it's not and i respect jared verse and a lot of these guys in the locker room afterwards what it's not is fsu's back right now and if you're, if you're over 20 years old, you know what it looks like when FSU is really FSU. They're not that yet. But here's what it is. It's a sure sign they're headed in the right direction. And it's a sure sign that this is not a sparkler. So there's some teams, for whatever reason, benefit from massive bounces of the ball in week one. And they give you a misleading final. But that's really where they peaked. It's a sparkler. It burns for a little while, then it just fizzles out. I don't think there's... 
much of a threat of a fizzle with this Florida State team. They're not a threat to go 11-1, and one, but they're also not a threat to crash and burn and make you look back when they miss a bowl game saying, remember when they beat LSU? Wow, I thought they were going to be something. I don't think that's this year. You remember when they pushed Notre Dame? Was it last year or a couple of years ago? They, they pushed Notre Dame in the opener and then, yeah, kind of fell off. I don't think this team's going to fall off. You know, the magic number down there has been eight. They want to win eight games this year. I think a lot of people may be recalibrating that. I'm, I'm still sitting on eight. I don't want to massively adjust based on one game. But look at the schedule here. They're going to Louisville in a, well, this week, I think, or maybe next week. What's today? Today is the, uh, yeah, so next week. And then, like, when you start to say these games out loud, for those of you on podcast, Boston College, Wake Forest, at NC State, Clemson, Clemson's a different animal. We're going to talk about them, uh, obviously, a little more when that game comes around. But all of a sudden, if, if you just duplicate the effort you were able to give the other night, you give yourself a chance in virtually every game you play on the schedule. Well, you certainly give yourself more than a puncher's chance to win eight games plus. It's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting time there for them right now. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.